Let's find out together. Have you ever stumbled upon a new hobby that made you think, wow, that looks incredible, I'd love to try that, but then you quickly realize you might not have the commitment to really dive into it? Well, that's how I felt about 3D printing. I mean, on one hand, the concept of creating objects out of thin air is undeniably exciting. You can create anything from models to paintings, even a Super Mario piggy bank and spare parts that are otherwise hard to find. And maybe one day, even cats. But not today. On the other hand, I was daunted by the idea of having to learn modeling software or fine-tuning a printer to get the perfect result. It seems like a big commitment in terms of time, but curiosity and the desire to print whatever I could find online kept pulling me in. And by now, I've used it for many DI projects and repairs. And that's how today I found myself with the Alpha Sun T1 Pro, the updated version of the T1. And even though I had zero experience, I quickly realized that I could get access to a huge library of pre-made designs online, ready for download and printing. In fact, 3D printing has come a long way in just a few years, and as I learned more about them, I realized they really transformed into some something that everyday folks can use without any hassle. I think it could be considered like a console. They have roughly the same price and you can have fun creating whatever you want. Everything from organizers to game, there are also modular objects designed to fit together and nest with one another. And even big objects like this one right here. But I think the usefulness of a 3D printer shines when it matters of small components or parts that break and would be hard to find otherwise. Like one time my keyboard broke in this part right here and I just took the measurements, designed the model and after 20 minutes I had fixed my keyboard. Basically, with a 3D printer, you can turn your ideas into reality. And I also believe that making an object with a 3D printer makes you feel more connected to it, even if someone else designed it. Plus, let's not forget about the cost factor. The price of a 3D printed object is often lower than what you would spend on a similar one. Unlike traditionally poor case items, which you have to search for, wait for delivery and rely on manufacturers to produce, 3D printed objects offers a unique advantage. If someone wants something, they can simply design it and have it ready in just a few hours. This immediacy not only makes the process more convenient, but also opens the door to creating much more creative and personalized objects. For example, it would be very difficult to find a customized portable chessboard like this one, with each piece also crafted in a particular way, and when you're done playing, you can take it apart and store everything inside. So when you take a look at the printer, at first glance, it's just a plate and some moving parts. And the first step in 3D printing is creating the model of the object that you want to print. Of course, you can use modeling softwares like Blender, but you can also visit websites like Tingiverse and Shapeways, where you can find the objects that other users have 3D modeled for you. Once you have a finished design, you have to send it to the printer, and when the printer receives the data, it will pull the material through the tube, melts it, deposits it into the plate, where it instantly calls. As you can see, a 3D model is created through layering, and the printer will add a layer at a time until you have a fully formed structure. But the real question is, how do this printer manage to create such detailed objects with precision? Because if you imagine to melt plastic and try to shape it, nothing could be that precise, it would be a mess. But the filament isn't just randomly pushed out, it's extruded with exact precision, layer by layer, at controlled temperatures and speeds. The printer follows a precise path, mapped out in the design file, moving along its axis in extremely small increments. We're talking about fractions of millimeters here, and each of these movements is controlled by the firmware running inside the printer's brain, the control board, which coordinates every movement to make sure that the filament is laid down exactly where it needs to be. 
All this information can change from printer to printer, even if you're using the same file, and it's the slicer to produce the temperature to reach the speed and the exact movement to do for the printer. Obviously, many files can come in multiple pieces or require post-printing work like sanding, removing supports, adding colors or parts, and this allows you to create prints that are much larger than the print pad. The qualities and the characteristics of the printed objects also depends on the material used. The most common material used in 3D printing is plastic, and if you're just getting started or you need something that prints quickly and consistently every time, you should definitely consider a filament like PLA. It's user-friendly, has low warping issues and prints at lower temperatures, making it perfect even for beginners. But there are tons of special varieties of PLA, such as the glow-in-the-dark PLA, or the wood PLA, which combines the wood fibers and powders with the PLA polymer, allowing to create objects that has a wood-like look and texture, but still retaining the easy-to-use properties of PLA. And even the handle of this ping-pong paddle was printed with the wood PLA. And there's also PLA high speed, which is used in printers like the FL70 One Pro because it reaches incredibly high speeds. With a maximum movement speed of 1000 mm per second, this PLA enables fast print speeds and higher volumetric speed thanks to its superior fluidity and heat dissipation. And don't worry about the noise, because this time they've implemented a new silent cooling system that keeps the noise levels low at 55 decibels, even at high speed. Then there is PAD-G, which is gaining popularity for its strength and flexibility, it's less brittle than PLA and offers excellent layer addition, making it a great choice for functional parts. And let's not forget about the TPU, which is a flexible filament, perfect for creating objects that require elasticity like foam cases. Its rubber-like properties make it an interesting choice for creating projects that are required to bend or stretch. So finally it's time for the unboxing which is my favorite part and I really want to see what's inside. Okay we have a lot of packaging to go through. I have to remove this part and then I can take a look inside. And there is the top part, the bottom part, and luckily some instructions, which will be very useful since I have to build a 3D printer myself. And basically the first step is to take out the top shell, which is this one right here. So let's start from that one. Now there are some parts to assemble, like this filament holder with these screws, and luckily every piece has a number so you can easily recognize it from the others. The top part is already assembled, and now I can mount the supporting structure by inserting the axis into the bottom shell. Finally, I'm done, and to my surprise, setting up the FL Sound T1 Pro was even easier than I expected. The instructions were great, and there will be tons of YouTube tutorials out there which will make everything smoother, and if I wasn't filming the whole thing, I bet I could have had it fully set up in like 15 minutes, and once everything was together, you just power it on, hit the auto leveling button, and it takes care of the hard part for you. With the old 3D printers, you had to do this manually every single time and it was a huge pain for beginners. But now practically everything is automatic, even for the 3D models there are tons of websites that already provide a huge number of ready-to-print STL files. On these websites many files are uploaded every day and you just need to download them, load them into the slicer and the printer is ready to create the object. For this specific printer, the 2.0 version of the slicing software is available. It's based on Orca and offers enhanced root optimization and print quality improvement, making the operation more intuitive and user-friendly. 
And there are also many objects with different colors that you might want to print. But for printers with a single extruder, you need to stop the process in certain points. You need to use the slicer to specify at which layer height you want to stop to change the color of the filament. There is a specific function called change at Z or pause at height, and this function allows the printer to stop at a specific height, corresponding to a particular layer, so you can change the filament. So if you ever thought that 3D printing is only for experts, I hope this video has changed your mind. Because with the tools and the technologies available today, even complete beginners can dive into it without much hassle. Whether it's a small component or a custom part, the possibilities are endless. And the best part is that you don't even need to be a digital artist to do that, because there are billions of ready-to-print designs and printers that are increasingly user-friendly. So if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and to my Patreon page where I post updates or photos and videos behind the scene. See you in the next video!